Greetings, YouTube. This is Longbow. Check it out. I've made an anti-slingshot. This is my latest in a, an attempt to uh, fire antimatter. Well, actually, it's uh, it's going to be a mold for a slingshot that I'm going to be making out of aluminum. Because I've recently discovered that you can actually melt aluminum at home. You probably shouldn't. It's super dangerous, but I'm an expert. <laughs> no. So here I've assembled my uh, mold with four screws. And uh, I guess here's the rest of the stuff I'll be using. There's my fuel source. Got some MPS gas and some propane for backup, uh, a beverage. This is with my aluminum, a bunch of aluminum cans. Here I've got some uh, aluminum blanks. They're just little discs of aluminum. Uh, got some... Uh, solder scrap there, that's all silver. Got some more silver there I'm going to be using. And uh, here's my crucible, it's just a steel can. And I'll be putting it in this little forge that I made out of bricks. Just going to fit in there thus, thusly. And these bricks will help contain the heat a little bit. So let's get this show on the road. So first off, I'm just going to heat up the can because it's full of varnish. I'm going to burn that off before uh, adding any metal to the can. So I'm going to switch to the propane.
think I need a hotter flame to melt the aluminum. Well, we'll try a different grade, maybe that'll melt more easily. some of it melted. I think that's, uh, Well, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's got a little bit of slag in there, but uh, it does contain both silver and aluminum. The chunky stuff that came out the end was the molten aluminum. I was uh, a few hundred degrees shy of actually liquefying it, but uh, it's in there. I don't know if anybody's ever come up with this particular alloy of uh, silver and aluminum, but uh, I call it silvuminium. I'll wait about 15, 20 minutes or so, and it should be hardened by then. And I'll take it out. Well, I've let this thing sit out here for about an hour, just because I wanted to make sure it was completely set. It's now just warm to the touch, so I'll take apart the mold and try to get it out of there.
but uh, here we have my Silviuminium slingshot. It needs a lot of work to, to round it out. I'll get cracking on that, but uh, yeah, I think that'll be strong. <laughs> that size just grows. I can only wasp. So I've done a little bit of shaping on my uh, slingshot here. My Silviuminium slingshot. Uh, this is the top face, the side that was exposed to the air while it was in the mold, and the, the nasty bubbly side. What I've done is I've packed in uh, some clay in there. That's, uh, they call it oven baked clay. Made by a uh, Sculpey brand. I use the red, obviously. It's uh, quite soft, and sticky stuff. And uh, to cure it, you just pop it in the oven at uh, 275 degrees for 15 minutes, and it hardens up quite nicely. So all my four main faces are done. I'm going to be putting, this is going to be the handle side here, and the finger grips will be on this side. And, uh, well, let's do a little bit of shaping with the old uh, belt sander here. I got uh, 50 grit sandpaper on there, so it should chop through it mighty quickly. <clears throat> I'll just put on my safety glasses because I can't find my yellow ones. These are just sunglasses. Let's see how long it takes to get these four tips rounded. It was easier than I thought. Not too shabby at all. It's off to a fine start. I'm sure you get the idea now. Uh, I'll just finish up the handle, get to polishing, and then we'll shoot some stuff. Oh, by the way, I think uh, it's not just uh, aluminum and silver in here. I detect a, a little bit of an acrid smell coming from it, so I think there's also some tin. So I don't think uh, silvuminium, silvuminium is an appropriate name for this. I think to uh, reflect the, the fact that it uh, contains tin, I'm going to use uh, the names from the periodic table of the elements. And uh, let's see, it's AL for aluminum, uh, SN for tin, and AG for silver. I think I'll snag. So after a heck of a lot of sanding and polishing and just a lot of uh, elbow grease. My owl snag slingshot is now complete. Here's the side with the finger grips. This is the side that was facing up in the mold. I'm experimenting with this one. I'm, I'm not putting any uh, grooves for the elastic bands to fit into here. I'm just going to make it perfectly smooth. See if that works. And here's the back side. This was the kind of nasty side that you saw before. I filled all the, the bubbles with the clay there. So a friend of mine who goes by the name of Pico Chihuahua here on the tubes uh, asked me a question uh, about the ammunition I'm using. Uh, in my first video I used this little ammunition here that's a 9.5mm steel ball. It's, uh, it travels very quickly but it doesn't have a lot of power behind it. In my second video I exclusively used these glass marbles. They're uh, it's either 12 meter, millimeters or 14 millimeters. I can't recall. I think it's 14. Um, you can get uh, either of these ammunitions for about seven dollars, seven or eight bucks. You'll you get 75 of these, or 75 of the little steel ones. 
Uh, a recent uh, piece of ammunition I picked up was this uh, 20 millimeter steel ball, which is uh, honed and polished. As you can see, it's very spherical. It wants to roll away. And uh, I don't really want to say how many of these I paid for, but uh, $8 worth of these uh, will give you two of them. And the final piece of ammunition I want to talk about is uh, Pico had inquired about uh, if I was using any more sinister ammunition. And I had mentioned the uh, the Bone Crusher. I believe it may, it may have been George Sparava that invented this, I'm not sure. But uh, at the time I thought it was a commercial product and Pico did a little bit of uh, research and reverse engineering. and. Turns out uh, the bone crusher is just made from some common materials, a bolt, a washer, and a nut. That's a 3 8 inch bolt, 3 8 inch washer, and a 3 8 inch nut. I think this is an inch and a quarter long. I was going to buy a metric, but unfortunately the metric uh, was a little bit more expensive, and well, I'm trying to save money here. So you just tighten the three uh, pieces together. And there's a little bit of excess at the top here, and we're going to want to cut that off. So in order to cut off that little extra bit, I'll just put the, uh, the bone crusher in my vise. It's nice and tight, and then cut the tip off with the sawzall. Now that that's done, I can uh, solder this together. I'm going to use a little bit of silver solder just to make this indestructible. Finally, the last step is to clean up any nasty edges that may be left over. As you can see on this one, there's a big blob of silver at the end there, and there's some sharp edges, so I gotta just grind them down a little bit to uh, allow me to fire it in the slingshot. So I've just ground that down so that it's uh, this washer is or this nut I should say is about the same width as the this bolt on the other side. Now I'm just gonna round this end off. <clears throat> I can see the end of this nut is rounded off so that it's not gonna cut the bands or anything. That's pretty much ready to go. So there's the finished product, the bone bone crusher. There's a penny for scale. They've got a, a good mass to them. They're comparable in size to the... Uh, to these glass marbles. <clears throat> as their core is, anyway. But they've got a very sharp, sh striking surface, so I'm interested in seeing how these perform. Oh, it cost me uh, about $8. to make this many of these, whereas two of these bad boys, the 20 millimeter balls, would cost me $8. So these are quite a bit more economical, although I'm sure they'll be incredibly inaccurate, so they're only good for close range. Well, let's uh, string this bad boy up and see how it shoots. So let's do a little shooting, shall we? Uh, as you can see behind me, instead of bottles today, 
I've got the big pink styrofoam board of wisdom. And there are four circles on there. I got one for the 9.5 millimeter steel balls on the top left. Top right, I got 12 millimeter glass balls. Bottom left, I've got 20 millimeter glass balls. And bottom right, I've got the bone crusher. Sorry for using imperial measurement, but that board over there is one inch thick. It's actually made of two half inch thick uh, pieces of uh, styrofoam insulation. So for the smaller ammunition, I'll be using this slingshot, my God Slayer design. It has a small pouch. And for the larger ammunition, I'll be using this one, which I call the Wolf's Bane. With a great big honkin' pouch on it. So let us begin. This video is not about accuracy, I just want to see the penetration power of these, so I'm going to be standing rather close. So the first round is the 9.5mm steel, this little guy. I went through the wrong hole. Let's try that again. Oh, I suck today. There. Next is the 12 millimeter glass marble. That one bounced off. The glass is a little bit lighter than the steel. Let's try again. That one went through. Okay. And we'll put down the old God Slayer. And pick up the Wolf's Bane. This time around, I'll be shooting the 20 millimeter steel ball. Focus, damn you. It's a brute. I've never fired these before, and I'm really afraid of hitting my hand. But wish me luck. They have some power behind them. So, we now progress to the Bone Crusher. You know, silver slingshot, silver infused ammunition, that's got to be at least at plus two to damage versus werewolves. Now, fortunately, there's not any around here. And I'll tell you one thing, mister. Well, if you don't like the word whore, don't be one. This isn't your country, so you keep your fucking mouth shut. This is the United States of America. Do you understand? And if you don't like it, fuck off. Yeah. All right. So let's test this puppy out. I missed. I'm having bad luck with that one, so I'll shoot uh, the Bone Crusher with the God Slayer slingshot. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> that one right cleared right through it, eh? Yep. Did you see the stuff like? One more. <laughs> off my hand. Oh, that hurt. That didn't hurt. Okay, we're done shooting. Michael, Thanks for watching. So here's the carnage up on the front of it. Holes are rather clean on that side. Let's see what it looks like on this side. Well, this little hole here, that's from the 9.5 millimeter ball, as well as this one. And that hole from the 20 millimeter ball as well as that one and that one that's the damage the 12 millimeter glass ball did and this one here is the bone crusher not only did it punch through but it shattered the crap out of the bottom of this thing and this is what the bone crusher did to my hand. That's why it's a good way, good reason to wear gloves. Because that frigging hurts. And it's swollen as hell. But I'll live.